Okay, composition of functions. In order to do this topic, we have to start with an understanding of functions. So let's just ask, what is a function? Well, a function can be thought of as a box, okay? Where if you put a number in, it does something and gives you a number out. Okay, so let's imagine this function. Let's call this function f. If we put the number 1 in, it gives the number 1 back. If we put the number 4 in, it gives you the number 2 back. And if you put the number 9 in, it gives you the number 3 back. So what function do you think this is? Hopefully you can guess that this function is just not x squared. Sorry, this function is the square root of x. Okay, it takes an x value and gives back its square root. Okay. Obviously, it'll work for a lot of numbers. You can put a lot of numbers in, it'll give you numbers back. Sometimes, however, there are numbers that if you put them in, it causes the box to crash. Like if you try to put minus 1 into this function, you get no answer. Okay? Now, all of the possible values that you're allowed to put into a function have a special name, and that name is the domain of the function. And sometimes it's written as DOM of F. Okay? And in this case, the domain is naught to infinity. All of the numbers that you get out of a function, like that, has a special name, is the range, which can be written as RAN of F, and in this case, a 0 to infinity. Okay, so that's, that's what a function is. What then is a composite function? Let's move on to that now. A composite function is where you have two functions in a row. So you start with a number, any number, x. You put x into the function g, and you get the answer g of x. So far, so good. But then in turn, we take that number g, we put it into another function f, and what we get out is what's called a composite function, f of g of x. Or in other words, f o g of x. Okay? That's all a composite function is. It's nothing complicated, just two functions in a row. Now, in order for a composite function to work, in other words, the domain of a composite function, we need two things to be true. Okay? Firstly, we need we need to be able to put x into the function g. Okay? And secondly, we need to be able to put g of x into the function f. So now there's two conditions for this whole composite function to work. So in other words, x must be an element of the domain of g, and g of x must be an element of the domain of f. Okay. In other words, if you're trying to find the domain for a composite function, then you need these to be true, Okay, if that composite function is g, then f. Alright, so what we'll see in the next YouTube is how to use this formula, which you can either memorise or just remember how, where it comes from to solve a particular question.